you are with another episode of the Stellar Sound Podcast. I'm your occasional host, Radina, here from the Netherlands. I'm very glad to be speaking today with Raf, Raphael Weinroth Brown, right? Not Weinroth, Weinroth. It is Weinroth, actually. Is it Weinroth? Yeah, okay. yeah I pronounce it that way. Yeah. yeah. Weinroth. Yeah. All right, yeah. that's a bit more the Dutch way, actually, <laughs> how it would be pronounced. Okay. So, yeah, I'm really glad to be speaking to you. Actually, it's been a while that I've also hosted. So that's going to be a nice celebratory episode, I would say. And um, awesome. it's pretty hard to actually introduce you because you've done so much and you keep doing so much. So I would say you are a cellist extraordinaire. You're also a composer. So in the general sense of the word, multi-instrumentalist. What else you would say you are? Uh, I mean, that more or less sums up what I do, I guess. Yeah. So I, you know, I create music, I perform, I improvise, uh, I record, and I, I also teach. Uh, so all of those things, I guess. Um, yeah. It's, it's all mostly centered around music. Yes. The, Can you give general, master so. classes as well? Oh, recently I did one that was that was cool. Uh, it was unorthodox uh, in terms mm -hmm. of what master classes are usually like, but um, I appreciated that actually. Yeah, were you invited specially to do a master class yeah. for cello or? I was invited to give yeah, basically a type of presentation, sort of interview type uh, session because at that point, uh, people couldn't attend the masterclass physically. So mm -hmm. the idea was that I would come in, you know, and be in the venue and uh, play some of my own work and talk about it and answer some questions and take some questions from uh, students and people who were uh, just tuning in to listen. So uh, yeah, it was a, a different style, but it was it was really cool. It was nice to be able to talk so much about my own work. It feels like, uh, you know, this kind of like you're being a little bit spoiled by getting to talk <laughs> about your own stuff and play yeah. it and uh, get so deep into that. Mm -hmm. so. Get the attention and the respect for it, I can imagine as well, well. Yeah, it just feels very, you know, in a way to talk about your own work, uh, it can feel very self indulgent. Like, of course, it's sometimes <laughs> like if you have a session like that, that's what it's for. But mm -hmm. um, I know that for myself, I like to focus on my own inner world as like a kind of a more private thing and yeah. try not to just sort of spew it out onto others uh, unless I'm invited, of course, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It feels like a little bit yeah. much. It can be a bit much. So I know, I know I can actually relate very much to that. I think it's a bit of an introvert thing because we have right. like a very rich inner world, but it's not necessarily easy to project it outwards and not always yeah, even exactly. in terms of like easiness, but maybe even the desire to project it outwards. It's not always there. Um, so I can, yeah, mm. I can relate this. Totally. Mm. That, that's a great way of putting it, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, I actually, um, I was quite nervous having this interview and I'll tell you why, because I've known you on the internet since I started a couple of years back, I started doing vocal covers of Opeth. So I did a couple. And then while I was browsing YouTube, I found your for nine cellos, the arrangement of harvest that you oh, did. Yeah. yeah. And you still had the very short hair. So it was That's uh, right. you know, quite a while ago. Maybe five <laughs> yeah, years 2016. Ago. <laughs> I was just starting to grow it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I found that and that's where it began for me, you know, knowing about you, but that's the first time we speak, so I was quite uh, nervous about it, but especially because I want to ask you so many things and it feels like, you know, I, I may have a thousand questions prepared here, but we got to do a follow up session for you yeah, <laughs> to encompass everything, but that could still right. work. It's been a right? funny year so far. Um, I would say that for the world in general, it hasn't been a very good year overall, but I would say that actually especially as of the beginning of that tour that we did and starting in March, I've been having a really cool year and uh, have been enjoying the experience a lot, especially of playing live a lot more again and um, connecting more with people and, and being out there and in the world, you know, sharing and 
So it's been really nourishing to do that. And it's really kind of put me in this position of uh, sort of like your experience of time uh, gets longer when you have this greater sense of kind of excitement and wonder around things. And when your experiences are a bit more memorable, I feel like yeah. everything kind of stretches out a little bit. Um, yeah, whereas, you know, when you get too much into a routine, um, and the days just seem to get swallowed up a little bit and, you know, before you yeah. know it, it's like almost the evening and it's like, where did the day go? So, yeah. um, yeah, you know, the tour was really good. I have to say that I think it was my, um, favorite tour that I've done with Leprous, despite a lot of unfortunate circumstances that befell us, you know, really? along the way. Uh, yeah, but I'll get to that in a minute, maybe. <laughs> but uh, I just, yeah, you know, I hadn't seen any of those guys in person in exactly two years. Mm -hmm. um, we hadn't played together, you know, and yeah. uh, it was just great to come back and uh, just just start doing that again. And um, I think it just fit perfectly, pretty much right away, like it just clicked. And uh, for me, one of the things that was different about this tour was that I felt like I was more present in the experience mm -hmm. uh, of, you know, the everyday and the shows and my interaction with everyone. And I really felt like I was there for that. And that's just the only thing I had to do and that I really needed to focus on basically mm -hmm. at the time was just having the best tour possible and being part of the team and, and just kind of enjoying every moment of it. And uh, so I feel like it was a more positive experience for me than I had had in the past because of that. And um, yeah, the shows were all really good. You know, I don't think that there were any real duds on the tour in terms of the <laughs> shows. Like, you know, of course it was like, in North America, I think like things were just starting to kind of get moving again. People mm -hmm. were just starting to get back out there and, and do tours. So yeah. on one hand, I think there was still a little bit of um, like hesitancy from certain people to yeah. attend shows, but then the people who were there were really into it. And uh, you know, they really wanted to say hi and buy merch and all that kind of stuff. They were really hungry for it. So that was great. And um so it was a great opportunity not only to reconnect with my bandmates, but also to connect with people in the audience and and just uh, meet lots of folks out there. And uh, and then I think also the set lists that we played were really good. Like, I think that they were a great mix of the old and the new. Um, I mean, mostly kind of more recent stuff, but I thought that it was a really cohesive showcase of the band. And for me, the songs that we played were all songs where I really felt like um, I was very, very integrated in everything and mm -hmm. like more so than ever before. So, um, yeah, it was really, really positive for me. And, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it was, it was a grueling tour as North American <laughs> tours often are, you know, especially at the club level, it's like, mm -hmm. it can be a little bit like a bit of a grind sometimes. And, I can and of only course you imagine. have the longer driving distances yeah. and, and you don't have the hospitality that you have in Europe and, you know, really we were short on you like don't? some, Oh yeah, no, nowhere near like, and, <laughs> but you, you learn to accept this. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, if you're from North America, like I am, then yeah. at first you, you just become used to it, you know, but then as soon as you start playing in Europe, then you think, Oh, this is what shows can be like, <laughs> you know, then you get like when you arrive in you your can... mind. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So then when you have good European tours and, you know, then you go to North America and play and it's like, oh yeah, it's still like this, right? right? Yeah. <laughs> then after that, um, I came home and I pretty much had a couple of days before launching into like a whole other process where I did, um, I did some shows with a dance company here in Ottawa. I saw Ottawa some dance photos Directive. on Instagram. Of yeah. This one. yeah. Yeah. It was super fun. So it was like, again, I'd been performing a lot. So I was really kind of just ready to do that, but it was very different, of course, and but really fun. Uh, and I was playing my own music from my album Worlds Within. Yeah, uh, played the whole thing, so it was like a choreography the whole album. that was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, lovely! So we yeah. did a. It was like a forty-minute dance piece that was choreographed uh, to go along with basically the record. Um, wow! So yeah, it was really cool. We did four nights of that and. 
uh, it was really, really special, um, like an amazing group of people, you know, and uh, yeah, so I'm just really looking forward to hopefully doing it again uh, in the near future because it was so much fun and uh, just such a great process. And again, like very immersive. I kind of figured, okay, it seems like there's a lot of rehearsal time, mm -hmm. more than like as a musician, what I'm used to. Yep. And so I didn't want to book anything. And, and so I basically just kept it open. And then I was there a lot rehearsing. And I think that was really good. Like I was kind of a bit over prepared. <laughs> you know, we got to know each other better in a short period of time. And like, I was just totally in that bubble. Mm -hmm. And it for me, it was like a nice lesson, because often I'm really spread super thin, doing a million things and my mind's like, everywhere yeah. all the time so i have a question about I mean, that it, <laughs> in regards to this yeah, yeah for sure yeah because i've seen yeah, you so like, like so so busy with uh, i mean that's just judging from what i've seen on instagram or you know the other socials where you're active but um one of my questions was exactly that how do you then manage all of the different projects because they're also different they're, they're just different and they happen yeah. it seems at the same time all at once often often yeah. so yeah yeah. I think my entire adult life has been like that pretty much like to some degree that I've been juggling a lot of different things, often very different yeah. things. And um, you need to have a lot of energy and a lot of like this feeling of like, if, you know, if this doesn't work out, if I don't succeed, it's going to be like a catastrophe, a little bit almost like the sense of uh, impending consequences Ooh. to be able to bulldoze your way through those types of scenarios uh in general i'm getting to a place in my life where i'm less and less interested in living that way but mm -hmm. i guess it, in a lot of circumstances it's like you think that you're managing your schedule in such a way that like you have breathing room for everything yeah. but then it doesn't end up that way and things end up colliding mm -hmm. and so like you just have to kind of push through and then uh yeah so i think it's just a question of determination and drive but also relying on past experiences of knowing what's like i've done something more difficult than this before mm -hmm. and being able to kind of use that as um a basis for having the confidence that you can do the thing yeah. like i think for me like i'm a little bit insane and so like for <laughs> me if uh if i see a scenario that looks like okay, that's, that looks kind of risky. Mm -hmm. Like I might not be able to get all these things done. I just think, no, nah, I'll be able to get it all done. Like I have this sort of weird feeling of like, no, no, of course I can do it. And mm -hmm. because if you think that you can't do it, then you've already, you already kind defeated of failed to manage beforehand. it. Exactly. Yeah. So I think at least having that, uh, that confidence that you can do it, even if it seems uh, just very impractical is, probably important at mm -hmm. least to get started um yeah but in general now I, i'm trying to figure out ways of just asking myself okay like what might not be so important mm -hmm. for me to do at this time yeah. or whatever like to try to uh focus on the things that i know will matter in a long time you know in a matter of years yeah. what would i regret doing or not doing in like five ten kind of years leads me to my next question in regards to you as a person i don't know how separate you as a person are to you as a musician or after musician so is there really mm. a is it very intertwined you would say or are you very different in your daily life that's a great question um i've always thought that my music is my real self and that me as a person i'm not that interesting maybe but i i feel like i'm just kind of a, an ordinary guy but um i think there's a big difference like i think as a performer like i become a bit, a bit of a different person and i've seen other people that are like this yeah. too where it's like they're they're quite unassuming mm -hmm. or they seem very kind of casual yeah. as people and then when they perform it's like their face changes their demeanor the way they move and everything oh, yeah. there's this kind of aura about them and like yeah i would say that especially i think that's part of why maybe i've become so associated with cello also is because i kind of go there a little bit when i play cello and um 
and I think that there's like this kind of whole uh, creative world that I kind of enter into when I play and uh, the sound of that instrument and its, and its configuration for me have really become like very connected with my imagination yeah. um, and sort of my creative voice. Uh, so that's, that's cool. But I think, yeah, like some people probably want to get to know me because of my music and then maybe are surprised by the way I am, for example. Mm. Uh, like I'm most of the time, like pretty mild mannered and just kind of like, uh, and I'm, I'm quite introverted and yeah. I think a bit shy by nature mm -hmm. actually. And like, uh, when I'm speaking about music, I can get very into it, but otherwise, you know, I tend to be like, probably not someone that you would notice very much actually. And so it's, it's kind of like, yeah, it's a, it's a funny thing, you know, like being an artist in general, especially a performing artist, yeah. I think it's kind of like, uh, it, it's sort of like you have this part of you that, that sort of comes out uh, a little bit when you do the thing and then it goes back in and yes, it's almost like, true. yeah, yeah uh, it, you know, it's a, like a blessing and a curse. Um, you know, a little bit like those, I don't know, like comic book characters or something. It's <laughs> the like, other side. They become so yeah. like, yeah, exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, whether it's like something that you can control or not or whatever. But, um, but what's interesting about like that dimension, you know, whether it's like an affliction or a superpower or whatever it is, it's that like, as a person, you ask yourself like, well, what would I be without you? You know mm. what I mean? It's mm -hmm. like, you know, you made me what I am. And that's like, <laughs> I love this. Uh, yeah. you know, like, you know what I mean? And it's like, whenever you like watch one of those films or whatever, and it's like your hero or whatever character is like, they've lost their ability to do the thing that makes them special. It's kind of like, oh man, you know, because they go through this internal struggle mm -hmm. of trying to figure out like, you know, how can they still exist Without, and like justify yeah. themselves and manage all their personal stuff, which is still very human, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. In spite of the fact, you know, yeah. So that to me is really interesting. And I think about that a little bit too, because it's like, as a person, I, I try to be someone hopefully that it's like, I can exist independently of the art mm -hmm. and, and still feel like I'm a good person and, <laughs> you know, not just like, whatever or you know <laughs> a so shell it's, of your performance yeah exactly yeah persona yeah 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 you know <laughs> yeah. yeah a lot of uh, and no I, I get you again and um what you're saying sounds to me like the normal journey of aligning your values actually finding out what are your values what do you personally mm. care for because you can get easily swept away by other people's um demands let's put it that way yeah yeah um but now you're at a very different point, of course. You have more of a sense of control, I imagine. Yeah, yeah, I think that I feel a bit more like I'm in the driver's seat now. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel that something that I overlooked when I was younger, I would say is um, experience and seniority and age. Like when you're younger, people will see you as being younger. Yeah. You know, and they'll be like, oh, yeah, this this guy, like, you know, he's like kind of really fresh and like, you know, I'm sure he'd love to work really hard and, and kind of dig in on this thing that, you know, whereas like when someone's older, then people will not necessarily assume that they'll just be willing to do mm -hmm. certain types of work. Yeah. Um. So I think that that definitely plays a role Uh. that like if you've been around the block, you've been on the scene for a while, um, you've done a certain amount, then people do regard you differently. And also you see yourself differently too. You say, okay, I've done this type of thing, mm -hmm. you know, a million times. I don't need to do another one of these. Yep. Um, and, you know, because you've uh, witnessed certain patterns repeat themselves in your life. And you said, okay, um, every time I work with people where it's this type of agreement, or if I do this type of a gig, or, uh, you know, this time commitment or this type of thing or whatever, I see what the results are, mm -hmm. you know, you see the pattern Patterns. repeat itself. Yeah. And then, and then once you've, you've witnessed that enough times, then you have like the information to be able to see the writing on the wall and go, okay, maybe I won't do this mm -hmm. again, or, oh yeah, this is definitely going to be good. Is this, you know, worth doing? 
and it becomes easier to gauge that like to sort of predict what the outcome will be and to steer your way because like the first time around with any of these things you have no idea yeah. and and at first you're just kind of confused and then you start to see things repeat themselves and you understand the patterns the way people work the types of people that are going to approach you and uh sort of what type of situation will ensue and all that mm. sort of business so uh, i think that that's that's helpful um yeah and i think the more you've done also it's kind of like people see that and it sort of speaks for itself a little bit uh and i didn't really understand the value of that before i just thought well if you're good you're good right like if if you're you know if you're able to play well if you're you know if you have an interesting sort of uh, artistic voice uh then you should just be able to have opportunities but it doesn't really work that way it's not really there's not really a direct correlation with just your intrinsic value mm -hmm. and what you know what types of opportunities you get it's a lot of it comes from like um what you've done already what you're putting out there into the world how often you are i think consistency now consistency of course is very important is more than it was before yeah. yeah and uh and also like uh, your relationships with people uh which is a thing that i really you know didn't have a handle on before uh and i I don't claim to be great at it now, but I think I'm like, better. Some people <laughs> need that positive reinforcement um, and they need to be told, hey, you know, you should just go out there and, and perform or you should just make a record. Like, why are you not mm -hmm. doing this? Like, you're ready now. A lot of people are stopping themselves or not giving themselves permission. It might be a better way of putting it. So um, that's that's something that I, I feel more of a responsibility to do now and uh uh, yeah, it feels just as much part of the the job and of the the life as creating the music and doing my own thing, but being there for other people because it's about community and it's about like helping everyone realize what they want to. Um, and I just I hate the idea of like you know discouraging someone by being so judgmental or being so harsh or something that like they would just stop. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, to me that would be like so tragic yeah. that someone would fail to develop because of what they heard from someone else because i know how hard that was for mm -hmm. me like you know growing up and sometimes with like you know when you go to classical music school it's like a lot of people quit because they don't get enough i think they just don't get enough positive yeah. energy they're just always being told they're not good mm -hmm. enough and so eventually they go no one's gonna think i'm good enough you know what i mean and they, they feel like there's no place for them yeah and that's really sad, you know, uh, and I, I think it's better to put out a different type of energy into the world. And I think that's like much more productive yeah. and we're going to have more interesting artists and we're going to have more stuff that we've never heard before. And imagine if like there's certain people that have this thing in them that they're able to share, but it hasn't quite come to fruition mm -hmm. yet. But we never get to hear it because they just decided oh, it's not worth it. I should just do a regular job and not do music at yeah. all you know because of all the adversity that's so important what you're saying i also think that um very often with creative uh, people i mean i think everybody is inherently creative but let's say musicians or if we speak about you um, we are a bit more sensitive um, and more attuned to the environment and the elements even and it's so important what we absorb I feel like it. So then mm. what you're saying, like if you don't get enough of the positive reinforcement, then what's the other side of it? Well, the critique, but the negative critique. And I feel like, especially kids, they're so susceptible to that feedback and it can make all the difference. Mm -hmm. Either continue a direction or get trampled kind of in your, in your tracks, if that makes sense. Yeah absolutely yeah. yeah yeah i think that a lot of people if you look at people who have done really really well um who are kind of especially i mean if we look at classical music it's an interesting example of that because i think there's such a clear culture around education mm -hmm. um the people who kind of come out on top so to speak i hate to say that but like who have that sort of tangible success mm -hmm. like they were basically told from 
the very early days when they started that they're really good, uh, that maybe they're the best in their cohort and so on. And they keep being told mm. that over time and it reinforces itself. And that's why they end up where they are. You know, it's like, it, you know, if you did badly on a test, but you got good marks, you probably start getting better marks actually, you know, on the tests later, because it's like, you believe you're yeah. a good student. You internalize you know? it. Whereas if the, the opposite, yeah. yeah, yeah, you know, exactly. It's, it's kind of like almost like a fake it till you make it type thing where, I mean, so much of it starts in mm -hmm. here believing that it's possible and believing that you're good um you know for example like when i was really young like i always thought i was good <laughs> even though like a lot of stuff i did was you know objectively probably really bad <laughs> you know but when you're getting your start and you know you're writing your first pieces mm -hmm. of music and like all that kind of thing it's kind of good to be in that place because you're not judging yourself yet and you're allowing yourself the opportunity to keep making. And it's the process of continuing and doing more that gets you there, not, you know, making one thing and then judging it a lot and, you know, not making other things because you're so concerned about how you did that one. Like, I think that it's, it's so important to learn through many experiences and a repetition and, uh, but yeah, especially with creativity, like the actual initial process should be completely non-judgmental. Yes. And it's not about, even about making something good. It's just about mm -hmm, making something mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, allowing that to flow freely. Uh, so, yeah. yeah, I think that that's, that's really important. So like the type of energy also, like if I'm teaching or, you know, if someone like sends me a song or whatever to listen to, like then, you know, I don't want to like make them feel discouraged or make them feel like they can't do it. On the contrary, like I want them to feel empowered to feel like they have everything at their disposal to get to the next level. And maybe they need to hear a few things that they hadn't considered, but it's like, hopefully that will open up their mind to those possibilities and think, oh yeah, it's like, I could totally do that. Mm -hmm, I just hadn't mm -hmm. thought of it. Yeah, we judge ourselves pretty harshly anyway. So if you add somebody else yeah. on the outside judging you on a consistent basis, I can imagine the the failure of that. Yeah, like I think that I mean, you have to you have to be a certain type of person to be able to push through that in a lot of cases. Like if you're you know, if you've already been used to doing something very intensively then i think that like mm -hmm. you can handle it maybe because you've, used to it. Mm -hmm. you've built up that armor a little bit but but also for me like in the years following music school like i had a lot of issues negotiating kind of i would say like these voices mm -hmm. that uh weren't serving me yeah. in what i was doing but that so much of my work was revolving around me creating something that was going against mm -hmm. the grain and, and doing something that was non-traditional and feeling like I had to justify that by creating something that would also look good in the eyes of that sort of uh, classical institution. Mm -hmm. It's like, you see, I'm still doing something that's legit to you, but I'm doing my yeah, own. And of thing. course with you, with the and cello, so the first like, few sorry years... to interrupt you, but I mean, cello, that's such a just traditionally classic instrument. And then what you do is so out there. It's so innovative. Yeah. I, totally get that that you might have had a bit of a feeling of okay how do i present myself to maybe my even my teachers what would they think about what i'm doing yeah yeah exactly i mean it sounds kind of silly and no. like neurotic but it's just it's normal if you've been in that environment for a while so for me like i remember at the beginning um i i felt that was necessary uh and now I kind of don't really care. Yeah. I don't really feel like I have anything to prove to those people or anyone. And what I've done has always been so, I would say so outside of the classical language anyway, that actually I've just been trying to move it into this kind of realm where it, it doesn't need to be connected to it in any way mm -hmm. because it's not, and it's not what I'm trying to put forward into the world anyway. It's, I'm just trying to make music and make music that's hopefully accessible to as many people as yeah. possible, regardless of 
what their background is. Uh, but it can take a while before you kind of cast off any of those feelings of like um, needing to justify yourself and feel legitimate. Uh, and I felt that both with classical musicians uh, and also with people kind of in mm -hmm. the metal scene and, you know, that, that sort of thing where like instrumentalists and stuff where I felt like I had to somehow prove uh, a certain level of competency mm -hmm in what I was doing that would somehow appeal to both camps. So a lot of my work, like I would say with the visit, yeah. like on our first album and uh, a lot of that kind of stuff comes from that place. And over time, like, I think, I mean, I, I still like to play in that style, but those objectives are no longer relevant mm. to me now. It's like, um, I don't make music just for like music nerds, <laughs> you know, I think that would be really, really sad actually like uh i realized like a lot of my audience doesn't really know anything about like music theory or any of that and like you know a lot of them are not mm -hmm. musicians but they're big music fans that appreciate bands that are very mm -hmm. sophisticated uh but all of those bands generally are also groups that make music that's quite palatable in other ways the apart technical. from just being yeah. very intricate yeah, exactly, exactly. So uh, I feel that similarly for me, it's it's just about making something that, that's good music that, you know, is just enjoyable and, and cohesive and feels like um, it feels like it's a it's artistic and, you know, it has a, a gesture that moves mm -hmm. people and that um, everything is done with a purpose uh, and not just sort of gratuitously because it, you know somehow yeah as you're saying it's it's technical and like it, it showcases yep. something it's like all of those um uh, elements that you bring into the piece should serve the overall effect that it's trying Absolutely. to create and yeah. i think that like that seems very elementary in a way but like it took me a long time to really get there you know to that point of feeling like that's the most important thing and you know if something is cool but it doesn't fit it's okay to get yeah. rid of it. It doesn't need to be there. And, you know, just because an idea is cool doesn't mean I need to use it because uh, it may feel out of place, you know, in the overall context. And therefore it's actually holding back what might otherwise be quite a good piece of music. It sounds, the whole album sounds um, the way it's supposed to flow, of course. It sounds very elemental. So it mm. makes me think of the elements you know yeah. put it put it that way but even it, when i put it on shuffle and when i had no idea objectively which comes before or after the other it still worked because of the mm. elemental element element that sounds stupid now but the elemental no, no. aspect of it because yeah. okay if it's the elements if it's seasons or if it's a switch of you know something natural there's always this uh, this flow to it um that works almost backwards or sideways, you know, it doesn't matter where the end is and where the beginning is. Does it make sense? Yeah, 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 a hundred percent. And I think that that speaks also to the general form of the record. I, I really like to use this word elemental. I mean, that's actually, I like it also because I felt that that was one of the first words that came to mind, <gasps> uh, but also because I think that, yeah, I'm just, I'm glad that it feels that way for you. Yeah. Because when I had finished the, the record and I needed to start figuring out how to kind of put it out there, I was just sort of struggling to find the words to describe it and to understand mm -hmm. what it was about still. It was so fresh in that way, but that was one of the words that came up. And I always felt that the album was very, it was like a lot of dark greens and like forest mm -hmm. and it was very much rooted in nature. And um, so many of the parts reminded me of that. And I tried to bring that out also in like the music videos and, and you know the imagery so i do feel yeah that there's this component of it being connected to the earth and to mm -hmm. nature and and cycles uh that cycles, happen yeah. regardless of us that, yes. that just happen in nature but that also that the record is kind of its own life cycle and uh but it's it's not just a cycle but it's actually a circle so like you could listen to it from the beginning but then when you get back to the end you arrive at the beginning again mm. and you could just listen to it on loop because the yeah. last piece is the first piece but with a different set of chords 
So really it's like, it could be the sunrise or the sunset or vice versa, depending on how you want to look at it. But it, it doesn't have, you know, some pieces also like, or some albums have a linear journey to them mm -hmm. uh, yes. where it's sort of like, you know, you have a main character and maybe you have like some sort of conflict that they go through or some yes. sort of uh, <laughs> realization, self-realization. Mm -hmm. And then they kind of meet their goal. And then there's like this resolution where they come out sort of uh, a different person at the end of this experience. Mm -hmm. But this record isn't like that. It's like, it's much more elliptical and like uh, enigmatic. It doesn't have that feeling of like, oh, we've conquered this or whatever. It's more like we go through this chaos in the middle, but then we come to accept it and mm. then sort of uh, go back to this infinite uh, expanse at the end. Um, yes. And yeah, so that's something that it didn't really occur to me in the process. It's so interesting when you make something, you're not always aware of its intrinsic like construction mm -hmm. and what um, what it might mean or what it you know might hold in terms of its yeah. like yeah I guess it's its own secrets right um, <laughs> but then afterwards you get to uh, you know like uncover those gifts and it's really cool you know I think it's so interesting about the creative process is that it's so intuitive sometimes yeah. that consciously you don't even know what you're doing and then yeah. after it's like oh yeah so okay this it. thing came out this way. So I much of it is just why... unconscious and if you let it flow, uh, what you mentioned earlier, the importance of letting it flow, I feel, why is it so important? Because you can't, if you don't let it flow, you're never certain completely what under the surface or what subconsciously may come out. And then you look at the product and the end result and you feel, oh, okay, now I feel things that I wasn't even aware of while I was putting it out there like if i could give anybody you know younger people especially starting out like advice yeah it's that like no matter how good you are or how good people tell you that you are like you can't expect also to be entitled to anything especially when you're starting out like because you don't have all the street cred yet <laughs> you don't have like the experience and so like um people aren't gonna give you like this kind of necessarily they're not going to give you that same comfort and that platform that they would maybe later mm -hmm. and so even if you're really good you might like contribute something to someone's record and think it's brilliant and think that you're entitled to that being showcased and they might delete it from the record or you know it might be turned down really low in the mix <laughs> you know and i've had both of those things happen a million times and uh, let me tell you, like when you think that your ideas are better than someone else's, mm -hmm. it hurts. Yeah. You know, yeah. you identify, um, and you identify very strongly then with yeah. the ideas. You're like, if this is my record, you know what I mean? I, I know what's up. Like, I know what the, mm -hmm. the, the good ideas are, but that's also a form of entitlement. Mm -hmm. I realized in the past, I just thought, well, I mean, it's obvious, right? It's like, not to, everyone, I, you know, yeah. you know, <laughs> not to, yeah. And, and it's also, it's like, you know, if I could talk to my younger self, I say, Look, man, like you're playing on someone else's record. That was going they to be my other power. question. So, you're like reading my mind. I was going yeah. to ask you, what would you say okay. to mini Raf then? Younger Raf. Yeah, yeah. I, I would say I would have told him to be patient and just say, look, you know, when you're working on these things, understand that like all the things that you want are going to come to you in 10 years mm -hmm. and you're going to get all of those things, but you have to be patient. Yeah. You know, you can't expect that when you're 19, you're going to get all of it. You know what I mean? And you're going to get some cool stuff. But the thing is that it takes people time also to catch up on the things that you've done and to like be able to uh, sort of get wind of it. And like your reputation does spread, but it takes time. Mm -hmm. And if you're trying to build something like, you know, your own band, that takes even longer than I think just being like a guest musician or, you know, somehow you're being featured on stuff like building your own band is the, probably the, the toughest thing to do, you know, yeah. and to be able to sustain that for a long period of time. So like be patient and also like, you know, take time regularly to invest in your own work in whatever way that is not to make it the best thing ever, the magnum opus, mm -hmm. you know, like, okay, this is the defining thing. Don't worry about that. Just make stuff. You know, I wish I had also done that a little bit more because I was so focused on, you know, all of my output being like 
at a very, very high level mm -hmm. and being the best thing yeah. that I probably could have made more stuff, uh, which would have gotten me further, uh, you know, than, than just only releasing the things that I thought were like perfect, you know, and those things did well, of course. But I think, for example, a lot of people that subscribe to me on YouTube, like, you know, I have, my YouTube channel grew very slowly because mm -hmm. I released so infrequently. And then people would say, oh yeah, this is really good, but I'm going to have to wait like, you know, like six months for the next thing or like a year for the next oh, thing, you the know, consistency because of I, social media. Yeah. Like you mentioned earlier. Well, now just, you have to do it. Now it's exhausting. Now it's like, you know, the level of output you need to have is way past what it was in like 2012, 2013, you know, where like, if you, if you could release like a couple of music videos in a year, that would be great. Of course. But if you could be doing the thing that everyone is trying to do now, mm -hmm. but just maybe releasing music, not necessarily doing all this content creation and all these like skits and things like yeah, that, that people do, shorts. but just making music. Yeah. Yeah. Like that stuff, you know, that to me, I, I understand why people do it and I understand that it gets attention, but I feel like there is a degree where it's like, okay, at what point are we just making entertainment and not art anymore? Yeah. And like, you know, how much time are we losing for making the art? Mm -hmm. And of course, like people will say, well, it doesn't take a long time to make a TikTok or a reel. I mean, okay, maybe, but like, if you're someone who is like me and you're extremely like meticulous with everything you do, and it's like even every email you write, you're like rereading it to make sure like <laughs> yes. you said everything correctly and that you didn't say anything stupid. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, when you're making uh, a record, like you listening to the mixes with headphones and like, you know, you're checking for little clicks mm -hmm. in the audio and like trying to make sure that the timing of everything is perfect and that nothing was played out of tune. Like you just simply can't create that quickly because your mind works that way. Yeah. And it feels weird to you to just put stuff out there, mm -hmm. you know, and of course, so there, there's a middle ground. Like for me, I thought, I think that like, if I, um, am a little bit more relaxed about that stuff and then it does help. And I, I can actually produce a lot, but there's a point also where it's like, it has to feel like it resonates with why you signed up for this. And, you know, there's like a magic in, in the, the creation and like the, the process of you know, getting into that world and an idea coming to you and you enjoying that idea and just being able to nurture it. That's why we're all here is for that stuff. And if you get to a point in your life where like that just completely gets sidelined, I think there's a risk there too. And I think we're seeing a lot of musicians speak up about that now where it's like this demand for content creation is getting so overwhelming that it's like kind of, making I think a lot of musicians very unhappy yeah. because they're just feeling pressured to produce all the time you know and I've done a lot of it and I think maybe I'm speaking also from a place of like having been very consistent mm -hmm. for a while like definitely since 2020 and now feeling like like you know sometimes you just need to take a break from doing that you can't always produce no. like no human being can always do that everybody takes breaks and like needs to sort of replenish and i know that now i'm in a place where like i feel happier when i'm like out in the world with people and like you know i i get to see them in person and i get to have real conversations and like i you know feel i, I feel nourished by their mm -hmm. energy too and by that experience and like which you can't have just by like replying to comments on instagram you know as much as i love all those people that do you know yeah. and i think that they're awesome it's like you need that that real experience and you know otherwise like as a as a human being like being you know mm -hmm. a physical person like you you need that as well like like biologically we need yes, that so um I yeah i guess we got onto that because i was talking about uh yeah maybe yeah just not creating as much as i might have but that's also coming back to the session work like uh just saying yes to all the things so that I could kind of get this foothold and not understanding maybe how important it would have been to try to take more time 
to invest in in my own work. And if not cello, I'm curious. Um, do you know what else you would have pursued as a career? Like, in just a non musical career. Yeah. Like yeah. Um, I probably would have been like a writer of some kind. I never really thought about it too much, mm -hmm. but I feel like I'm very comfortable with writing and like creative writing, but also like writing about topics, you mm -hmm. know, like sort of essays and that type of thing. Yeah. I feel like I probably could have done that. Yeah. Um, I like to use that skill a little bit. I think when you're, uh, when you're marketing or when you're communicating with people or when you're trying to describe your work, then that does come into play a little bit. Yes. Um, it, to be honest, like when you've been doing something like this for so long, it feels so obvious that it's difficult to envision yourself fully in like another mm -hmm. vocation. Yeah. Uh, it just feels like you've, that path has been living you so much <laughs> that like, you know, you almost don't even know what you're, what else you're cut out for in a way that would, yeah, I understand. it's not even about it being fulfilling. It's like, it's just your mission. Like you can't not do it. Mm -hmm. and, and you sort of feel that, um, even on the days that you don't feel like it, it's just what needs to be done. Mm. And I mean, of course you can still love it. And I mean, I think for some people like they, they love it, but maybe some days they just don't feel like it and they don't work at it. But for yeah. me, it's not really an option. Like, even when I was just like, I mean, I don't feel like doing this, but I need to do something relating to it um, all the time. Uh, you know, I think that that comes from both this sort of deep connection to um, like the, the essence of what it is mm -hmm. and uh, that it's somehow at the core of you and that it, it's like it allows you to live life on a deeper level, you know, at certain points, of course, not all the time, but that it adds this depth to your life yes. and that also that you feel like there's something um, that you've been given that it's your responsibility to give. Mm. Like for me, you know, with music, like obviously I've been very, I think I've been very fortunate with the opportunities I've had and the sort of um, the energy that I've sort of brought in and the people that have uh, manifested themselves in, their, in my life. It sounds very woo the way I'm saying it, but it's <laughs> kind of like these things just sort of happen yeah, a little bit. Yeah. You know, and like, yeah, so I feel also a responsibility that it's like, if I have this thing that, that I'm doing that seems to resonate, that it's important for me to share that as much as possible, because I have this lifespan in which to do yeah. it. And like, if I don't take advantage of it, then it will have been time wasted. Mm -hmm. So in Canada right now, I feel like I see that like the cultural landscape has shifted a lot. And I think there's a lot of things that are like, kind of in fashion mm -hmm. now that I really believe maybe in 10 years will not be relevant anymore. And people will be like, oh yeah, that was totally like the 2020s or the late 2010s or something like that, that like a lot of, a lot of things that seem really relevant right now will become totally irrelevant and will just fall away. And I mean, I was just speaking from yeah. my own perspective from being here and, uh, and seeing how things are going down. And I don't want to like get swept up in that because I want my music to still be there after all that's gone. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And just be like, you know what? I didn't change to try to win points with anybody. It was like, I've never cared about that. You know, I've never cared about what other people were doing. You know, when I was in high school, everyone was like into, I feel like everyone was into like indie <laughs> rock and uh, like Arcade Fire and things like mm -hmm. that, you know, that were big here. And I guess it's still big here now, but I just wanted yeah. to play metal and prog and like, you know, and write, you know, like challenging <laughs> piano pieces and stuff like that. And I didn't, I didn't care about like, uh, any of that. It's not that I thought that it was like, not legitimate. It's just that I wasn't interested and I wasn't going to do something that didn't feel mm. interesting to me, you know? And I, I think that that's, that's really important is like kind of staying balanced and staying grounded, grounded in, yes. in your thing. And if you feel like something doesn't work for you anymore, then you should change it. But you shouldn't change it because you're worried about how you're going to be received. It should always come from this internal instinct and intuition first. Um, and trusting that and completely 
taking care of it. It's like, you know, it's like a child or something. It's like, they're not just going to be exposed to everything in the world. Like they have to be nurtured for a while, you know, uh, before they can just Mm -hmm. go out there on their own. Like it's the same, I think with like your idea, you know, like you need to kind of give it time to build itself up and kind of build that strength so that it stands Mm -hmm. on its own. And it's not just like, this flimsy thing it's like you know it needs to have some solidity yeah. to it i think so, maybe sometimes uh, that's a challenge as yeah. well and uh, especially when you envelop yourself in a certain atmosphere or environment the challenge to just keep grounded and to keep a certain uh, distance between what the environment dictates and what authentically comes from within this uh, mm-hmm. yeah it's a tricky it's a balance a, a wall there mm. like uh you know that you're a bit guarded and you're not allowing yourself to be completely open and so you have to have vulnerability to be an artist and to share your gifts fully but at the same time you know when your your walls are down so your gates or whatever are down then it's mm-hmm. also like a lot can come in too yep so it's like it's hard to be able to like um have that openness to the ideas but also the thick skin mm-hmm. um but and i think it's especially true for people who have who are younger or they have less experience i mean but i think that certain things hurt no matter how experienced you are but i would say as a general rule like what i've seen is as people get more experience they kind of don't care as much Mm -hmm. about a lot of things in a way you know when i did these shows uh with the dance company recently like yeah. Honestly, there could have been no audience and I would have enjoyed it just as much. I mean, I was, of course, glad to play for an audience and <laughs> they seem to be really into it. But, you know, for me, the feedback and validation of the audience didn't make it a good show. It mm-hmm. was the like the experience of the show itself and the exchange that we all had and the feeling that we had on stage and like all of that stuff that made it really good. And uh, the feeling that like it wasn't about any of us in particular, or there wasn't any particular spotlight or anything. It was just about serving the work and mm-hmm. and the overall uh, product. Yeah. So, you know, there could have been five people, there could have been a thousand people, it wouldn't have mattered. Yeah. It could have been zero people. Like, you know, so I feel that more and more, if people like stuff, of course, that's awesome. And I appreciate it. And I don't take it for granted. But um it's no longer important to me really like it's almost like you just have to make the thing because you need to make it and yes and if you think it's cool that's a good enough reason to do it also like um even if you think that oh i know this person is not going to like it it's like that's probably a good thing if they don't like it it means that they have an opinion so it's not Mm -hmm. music that's just going to um, make people indifferent when they listen to it. Yeah, it's triggering maybe something, which is also a welcome bonus in terms of effect. You know, you, you, you don't really yeah. want to, um, like you said it so many times already, but um, you don't really want to, you don't want that to be your aim of how people are going to react, but it's the bonus of what you do. Yeah. And yeah, it could be the positive, yay, kind of feeling, but it could also trigger some people. And, you know, if it triggers some experience, you never know, it could be transformative also for them yeah. along the way. Or they might just ignore it, whatever. But <laughs> I think if they if they have a reaction and they mm-hmm. feel unsettled or disturbed by it, I would take that any day over them being really indifferent or mm-hmm. somehow just it's like, it feels like it barely hit the surface of them. For me, that's actually really sad when I'm like, you know, if I feel like an audience in general or like certain people just had no emotional reaction, Mm -hmm. they felt like it was completely trivial to them that it could have been any music. Then, then I feel a bit sad, but I also feel like maybe not fully understood because maybe they're not able to be open enough themselves to fully receive uh, the material and that they actually are a little bit guarded and like, whereas, yeah, I think when people are very open, they tend to usually like uh, the, the performance that they're experiencing tends to sort of trigger their own experience. And then it almost like 
imprints itself on that. Mm. So it like that they're reliving something of their own life with, for example, the music as the soundtrack. And that's part of what music is for, you know, it's it, part of it, I think is for healing and like being able to work through stuff and, and to relive, but in a way that allows people to move out the other side and not just get stuck in the loop, you yes. know? It's so processing. I think that that's part of it. It's part of its power. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It gives people a space to do that too, uh, where it's like, okay for them to do it. You know, it's like we have, I guess we have like socially acceptable places where we can deal with big emotions or we can deal with trauma. And like, yeah. I think that art is meant to be one of those places. Um, and yeah, like I welcome that personally, you know, because if it helps people move through those things, it's good for everyone. And we know now certainly like that mental health that challenges are a real thing, yes. you know, and that like that everybody has, uh, you know, their own to one extent or another, but I think it's more like, yeah, it's more acceptable to talk about that stuff now and to deem it, you know, a real, a real issue and like uh, a real illness, you yeah. know, that, you know, not, not to stigmatize it, but to not talk just, about yeah. it, like, okay, this, it's real, you know, and it's not just something to like, uh, sort of dismiss. And uh, yeah, that we need to use art and a performance and these like shared experiences of attending an event to like work through that in the same way i think that like music was used in the past to like you know help with rituals uh of life you know like giving birth or dying mm. or you know those types of things like i think that it's you know it's part of all of that and that's i think yeah and it's maybe most like primeval incarnation like music is a big part of those types of rites of passage um so it makes sense that like that type of energy would also come into play in like a, a context where people can sort of bring their own experience into it and it becomes like, you know, whatever it needs to be for them individually, but everyone can enjoy it, yeah. but from their own angle mm. and everyone yes. is legitimate in that way. Individually integrated um, in a sense. It, yeah, it, it, it always gets the, um, the mark or the signature of the person that's experiencing it. It's, it's no way that it's going to be the same for any mm -hmm. one individual. Oh my God, I feel mm -hmm. like we can talk forever about these things. And yeah. I, I, I'm because I see that it's almost, well, it's over two hours and I was planning, oh yeah, maybe we're going to talk for an hour, but it just flows. So thank you so much for making the time, first of all. Oh yeah, my pleasure. And second yeah. of all, I hope we can do follow-up sessions because there's so much on my a thousand question list, which I couldn't ask. <laughs> Oh yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, there's yeah. just so much more. But thank you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my pleasure. Yeah, this is really, really, really nice. And uh, yeah, I know I, I kind of started just going off on certain things for quite a while. Uh, it can happen, but it was really great. And yeah, I mean, I loved your questions. And I think a lot of those ideas, like they can just kind of lead to other things. And yeah, it's That's perfect. the nice part about it too. Is It's not a critique yeah, at all. Like, it's just... You know, just mentioning that no, I no. was also nicely surprised that we could just, you know, take it along and see where it where it goes. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, it was really nice. It's nice to leave it open ended in that way. And it, yeah, it's cool to have these surprise topics that aren't planned, but it just comes out. But I th feel like everything we spoke about was really relevant to like, yeah, the core of this, you know, topic and and I guess uh yeah, a lot of experiences that I've had, I feel like, you know, I was able to be quite open about it without yeah. having to be necessarily prompted about any particular project, which is which is nice. So yeah, I appreciate it a lot. Thank, Thank you. you. That's also a nice feedback for the session in general. I'm glad that you felt safe to express it. Yeah. And yeah, that's like I mentioned, for me, it was a bit of an experimental episode because it's been a while that I hosted, but um want to thank also anyone who is watching or listening to us. Thanks for being with another Stellar Sound podcast episode. And we're going to see you maybe on the Discord server. If you haven't joined, join right now. So okay. thanks very much. Awesome. Have a good thank rest you so of your day.